live. Okay, welcome back to the Duke Spine Institute operating room where we broadcast surgery live. Our next patient is a Canadian giant. That should have gotten some laughter from him, hopefully. But in all seriousness, he's, I think, six foot ten, right? And look at that, you fit on the table. Are you comfy? Yes, sir. All right. So did you ever play basketball? Okay, you probably get that from a lot of people. This is Dr. Duke, we're gonna get started, okay? All right, so you asked me if I watched Seinfeld and I said no, because I don't watch a lot of TV. That's the truth. I just don't have a lot of time. But I did watch the Peaky Blinders. You ever watch the Peaky Blinders? It's a good show, Netflix. It's free if you have Netflix. All right. I'm going to get started. I'm going to push around a little bit till I find where I want to go, okay? And then I'm going to give you um, a little numbing medicine. So we're actually going to be doing five discs. We're going to do bilateral 3-4, bilateral 5-1, and right side 4-5. So let's get started. All right, if you feel pain, I want you to just say, ouch. That will tell me that you're having pain. Now, this is the numbing medicine going in, so you are going to feel a little bit, okay? Can you hear me all right? All right. So I'm just putting some numbing medicine right now. I know. It sucks. Trust me. But I do need you awake for the beginning. You've watched some of my surgeries, so you know how it works. You okay? All right, so it's going to take me about 20 minutes to get everything in place, and then we're going to put you to sleep. And then when, you, when you're asleep, you'll be happy. I'm going to go to the other side, a little stick and burn. Okay. You, once you get to sleep, you'll be happy. You won't be complaining. You won't feel any more pain. Now, where did you come from in Canada? I didn't hear what he said. I'm here in Vancouver, Vancouver. All right. The West Side. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. West Side of Los Angeles or something. Remember, if you feel any pain, I want you to just say ouch, okay? And I'll give you more numbing medicine. Deal? Deal. Let's give me some numbing medicine. All right, so we saved our best for last today. How long have you been watching my surgeries? Well, I only watched about a half of them. What? That's it? I was doing fine until you asked me who's the first in the group. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Let's go to a lateral view. So that little tiny incision bothered you? I understand. It makes sense. It's not for everybody to watch. But it's available for whoever wants to watch it. All right, Sean. Well, that's fine as long as you don't make it too hard for me, okay? Is that it there in the back? Yes? Uh huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You can see the iliac crest kind of going through the L4 vertebral body. So let's just see. Sean? Yeah. I think I want to be a little higher. So that kind of works out. Remember, let me know if it's uncomfortable, okay? It's normal to feel a little poke here and there. That's normal. But if it's really hurting you, just say, Sean. All right, so we can all see 5-1. And you've done a nice job, Jordan. I'm going to start at 5-1. Is that uncomfortable? 
All right, let's get some more numbing medicine. We'll give you a little more numbing medicine. Make you feel better. Wow, such a deep back, huh? Impressive. Sean? Even so, we still need to be further north. So everybody's spine is angled a little bit differently. Yours is um, at L5S1 is angled so that you come up a little bit more higher than most other patients we do. But that's fine. That's your anatomy. Yeah. Not a problem. Sean? Sean? All right, so that's the best we can do, right? And there's no pulsing going on? Whoa. Incredible. One more time. You're doing great, by the way. We're just going to talk, okay? Oh, yeah. You're going to get to see all this later, Sean. I don't know if I have any fans. Well, I know you you do. You have fans, but I don't know about me. Do I have any fans? Huh? <laughs> I like that. That's a good answer, Sean. All right. Well, you want me to say hi to anybody out there back home? Let's go with uh, AP, shot, shot, and then AP. So do you want me to say hi to somebody for you? Is there somebody in particular? You want to give me a name? Or would you prefer anonymity? Well, my wife's name is Cheryl. All right, Cheryl, we have a hello and shout out to Cheryl. Yeah. But Cheryl's here, right? Isn't she with you? No. She's not. Matthias, all right. Very good. Well, hello, Cheryl, in Vancouver, right? Uh, Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island. Ah, Vancouver Island. I think I've seen Vancouver Island from a plane one time. Is it nice out there? Shot? Uh, no, no, I'm talking to my team. Shot? Oh, wow. Amazing. So interesting. Is there any way to get a better picture? Maybe bring it closer to him? How about some boost? How about bringing the plates down and just focusing everything right on that 5-1? Can we do that? Bring the collimator? Not, not, not so much that. No, no, no. M more the front and back. Uh, yeah, that's fine right there. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that's good. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. All right. I think that's better. Hmm? I think there's just a bone spur there. Right? Yeah. Look a little high there. A little high, maybe? Could be a little lower. Hmm? What do you guys think? You comfy? Yeah. Shot? Yeah, I think we're right at the top. So I'd like to. Shot? Shot. Maybe come in a little bit lower. 
shot. Can't do any better on the picture. If you can't, you can't. That's fine. But if we can, that would be really helpful. Just need a little more information. To me, we're right there, but a little bit high. No, it's overexposed. Uh, softly close, softly close. Let me try again. You're doing great, okay? I just want to try to get the most perfect trajectory for you, shot. 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 And shot. Nope, overexposed. A little less. Mm. Shot. Shot. Give me an AP. right there. Just so much mass. Can you give me a little more? Another picture? Maybe less juice. It's just you're overexposing it for some reason. You got to do something different. You can't just keep doing the same thing. It's too bright. We're not getting enough detail. Mm -hmm. That's the best you can do? Uh huh. Huh? Shot? <sighs> You're not pulsing? Try pulsing. Let's see what happens with pulsing. Got it. Try no pulse. So pulsing, no pulse is just too bright. Right? All right. All right. So let's go with the next incision. So we're doing the three four on this side as well. Correct? Mm -hmm. Doing good vitals wise, yes. Thank you. Shot. I need a bigger view. Oh no, no, no. Too zoomed in. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you need to open up your collimator. All right, so let's get that pedicle of three, 
better with a wag. While you're doing that, that looks pretty good actually, right there. That looks good. Can you scroll the MRI for me, please, to the side? Just scroll the MRI. Keep going, you're right there. It's a big bone spur. Keep going, other way. Uh-huh, keep going. All right, yeah, that looks good. All right. Are you comfy? Yeah. Sean? Sean? Shot. 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 Well, you're definitely not making it easy for me, Sean. But I didn't expect you would. Where do you feel that? Do you feel that in your back? It's looking pretty darn good, huh? We're right there. Are you relaxed? As much as you can be, right? Considering you're in the operating room? Huh? Is that where you typically get pain? Yeah, yeah good. Well... <coughs> There's no doubt your discs are pretty badly collapsed. Honestly, worse on the x-ray than the MRI. All right. Now we're going to get started on the other side. Remember, let me know if you have pain, okay? Sir? No, no, I understand. But I can give you numbing medicine, you know, to a point. Let's go back to 5-1. Get it lined up, please. Let me have some numbing medicine. No one's going to think you're a wuss. But is that a Canadian term? Because I've heard that when I was growing up as a kid. We used to use that a lot in California. That wonderful L5S1 level. You're definitely not a wuss, that's for sure. Let me know if you feel pain, okay? Sean? Well, oh, incredible, huh? Sean? Let me have a AP view. All right, let's and let's bring the floral a little bit north. I like your pedicles at five; they're beautiful, it's perfect. But I'd really like to not get as much hip. You know what I mean? I think if we can cut down on the hip a little bit, we can get rid of some of that soft tissue problem. Yeah.
shot. I need to see, um, that's, that's pretty good right there. Shot. 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 I appreciate your patience with me. Shot. All right, so let's go to another AP and see where we are. So for those of you watching, um, Things are going fine. The issues that I'm having or struggling with are number one, the degree that his discs are collapsed. They're massively collapsed. And at three, four and five, one in particular, four, five is not as bad. Um, and also basically, you know, he's a big guy, so he has a lot of soft tissue and we have literally the best floral machine available in the world right now, but we're still struggling to see everything we need to see. So, Sean, I'm relying particularly on him helping me. Any pain? Nope. Sean? I've got these two needles lined up pretty perfectly to the L5S1 disc space. Anything? Shot? Good? AP? So he moved just a little bit there, but you can see the pedicles are offset. So are the needles just by a, um, a millimeter or two. Yeah, looking good. All right, no leg pain? Nope. All right, hang in there, you're doing good. You knew this would take a while, right? Yep. Shot, shot. All right, so. You all right? You okay? Yeah. Oh, wow. Got some movement there. That's amazing. So happy about that. Shot. Can't even see the needle in the disc space, but it's there. I can see it. All right. We got lucky. It's one of my favorite things to say. Better to be lucky than good. Are you, let me numb your skin up a little bit more just to make sure it's comfortable for you, okay? You'll feel a little stick and burn. I just want to give you a little more numbing medicine. Is that uncomfortable? A little bit, all right. Well, you're not a wuss, okay? I promise you. I know lots of wusses. And um, you're not one of them, okay? And let me just tell you something. If the pain ever gets really bad and you start to feel angry at somebody, just think of the name Luis. <laughs> All right, just blame it on Luis, okay? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let me open them a little bit more, just a little bit. I'm just thinking, because we've got to get three in. All right, so I feel pretty good right now that we got that done, you know? Feeling pretty good. That 5-1 is tough, really tough. Blood pressure good? Yep. You just love, want to keep them happy, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Should I give you some more numbing medicine? Well, are you uncomfortable? Nope. Oh, 
No, I don't want to give it to you if you're not uncomfortable. Just if you're feeling any sharp pain. Shot. Okie doke. We got to get up to three four. Why don't you show me three uh, three four again? Show me three four. I want to get the two hard ones first. Okay. Let's. Is the pedicle lined up nicely? Yeah. It looks pretty good. Are you happy with it? I'm happy with it. How'd you injure your back? <laughs> yeah, how'd you originally injure it? Okay, just over time, John. No worries, John. Sean. 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 Let's get an AP. How long have you had back pain for? pretty good got a little kinkiness on the last needle see that left three three four all right looking good let's get a lateral view a little better than that all right anything shot Shot. All right. Yeah, as I always say, better to be lucky than good, right? So you're doing fantastic. We believe it or not, only have one more to go. We've done four, and this is the last last one. Okay, so bear with me. Just a little bit longer. Shot. All right, you got you got four or five lined up. Yeah, I think we need. There's a little bit of scoliosis there. Let's try to line it up a little bit better before I get any further. That looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. So we've got somewhat of a full house on this side, Sean. Um, Sean, but so far so good. Sean, Sean, Sean. John, feel anything? All right, you're doing great. We're almost done, Sean. You've made it uh, with your patience a lot better for both of us, Sean, and the anesthesiologist. All right, so um, let's get an AP. Yeah, you're doing fantastic. We're almost done. Yeah, it's going better than I thought it would. So you're you're the size of a professional basketball player, you know? Six foot ten. Yeah. All right, well, 
So the good news is we've done placing uh, the needles. The bad news is that you know what comes next. So we know that there are three discs in his back that are damaged. Okay, there's one, there's another one, and there's a third one. And he's got herniations and tears on both sides at three, four, and five, one. And then a symptomatic tear on the left, I'm sorry, the right side at, at four, five. You comfy? Yeah, All right, you can sneeze. Yeah, no worries. Sneeze if you want. Let me know when you're comfortable and you're ready to for me to resume. Uh, How bad is that on a scale of one to ten? Four. All right, is that where you typically get your back pain? Eight. Yeah, your muscles are spasming. That's why. So we just tested L three four and it's ten out of ten. Good news, that pain will be gone forever when you wake up, okay? You happy about that? Or I could leave it. Leave it or get rid of it? Thinking about it? Are you okay? John, how bad does that feel? That is a scarred up disc. That's the four or five, right? Wow, yeah. Super scarred up. All right, so that was a seven that's the, I couldn't even really get anything in there but that was still a seven so it's impressive so that was a seven over ten this one was a ten over ten yep all right we're gonna put you to sleep in just a moment okay is he awake you all right, sir? All right. You comfy? Just can't get my hand around it. Shot? How bad is that on a scale of one to 10? Huh? All right, that was L5S1 was a 10. Is that where you typically get your back pain? Okay. I got good news for you. We found your three painful discs and they're all painful and we're gonna fix them for you, okay? So when you go back to Canada, back to Vancouver Island, that beautiful place, I don't, are you gonna go out over there without pain? And we're gonna keep it that way. All right, I want you to count out loud for me in French. Can you do that? Do you know how to speak French? I'm just messing with him. I'm just messing with him. Of course, I know he doesn't speak French. Do you speak French? All right. Count out loud for me. One to a hundred. Keep going. You're doing great. When you wake up, we'll be done with your surgery. All right. Just to rehash what we've done, I've been able to go into all five disc points, two on the left, four, three on the right, through two cuts on his back. Each cut is seven millimeters. Tiny, absolutely tiny. Doesn't matter that he's almost seven feet tall, that he's a massive guy, muscular, big. I still could do the whole surgery through a seven millimeter incision. And that's what we're gonna do. So we tested the three discs and all three were causing his typical back pain. So if you're not sure, if one of your disc herniations is painful, all you gotta do is this test. But to be honest with you, you really don't have to. I'm pretty good at figuring it out by looking at the MRI. So if you just wanna send me your MRI and let me look at it, I could tell you. But if you wanna know 100% for sure, the discogram is the way to go. 
and that's the test we just did. All right, we need to move those cables so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to start at 3-4 on this side. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? I'm very happy for him that it went by so quickly. So because he's such a big guy, um, what he does is his body is blocking the x-rays and not letting them go through. So it makes it really hard for us to see. Shot? It makes it really hard for us to see, you know, where we are. But you could see at L34, both needles are perfectly going into the disk space. Now I got to put the guide wire down and I just got to make sure the guide wire is safely in place before I get this uh, needle out. It's looking good to me, Shot. Yeah. Guide wires in place. Much better picture there, huh? Uh, you can see better. So look at the needle. I bent it a little bit trying to get it in because the disc is so collapsed. It's like just almost bone on bone. And when we tested those discs, it created disc pain, discogenic pain, and his back tightened up. So typical for people with pain from a herniated disc, they get a flare up of the pain suddenly, creates a sharp pain, and then their back muscles tighten up. So they feel back spasms. So for those of you that treat back pain, chronic back pain, be aware of that. The muscle spasms are secondary to the joint pain. Always, always, always. When I, when I was taught to take care of people with back pain, I was always told that muscles are the number one cause of back pain, but it's not true. It's 100% false. Muscles are not the number one cause of back pain. Muscles never cause back pain unless you just had back surgery where the muscles are hurt and sore. What causes back pain, folks, is joints. Arthritic, painful joints, like the disc and the facet joints. In his case, the discs. All right, beautiful. So we're starting to get the dilator in the disc. Leave that. And now we're going to take the guide wire out. And you can see the dilator is wedged in there. And it's starting to open up the disc. OK? There's still um, a needle on the other side. No, no, I want to get in a little further. So we're, we're in there pretty good now. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this, this tube. Can you all see the tube? So even though he's a big guy, the whole surgery will still be done through a tiny little tube. Now, is this the biggest patient I've ever done the laser surgery on? No. I've done it on patients where the needle was, the needle was actually too short. Um, and we went all the way to the hilt of the needle. I had to get a special needle, which we've had specially manufactured just for special patients that have a really deep back shot. So, shot. Uh -huh. Is he asleep pretty good? Shot. All right, I feel like I'm in far. Enough? Yep. Let's just hope we don't have any tissue wedged in there so it'll make it hard to get separation. No, I think we're good. No, maybe not. Hmm, shot. Ah, it didn't budge. So now I got to figure out how to get this dilator out. Uh, hmm? No, I don't want to use the vice grip yet. No, it's going to take more than a poker. Can you see the tube? Yeah, I think it's coming. Shot? 
Something's coming. Damn, my lead is again falling down to my waist. What is wrong? Am I just losing too much weight? Shot? We may need that vice grip. Would you pull my lead up? And then tighten the, the strap. Is my butt disappearing or what? <laughs> Pull that belt tight. <laughs> now my daughter is not happy with me. What? She says I gave her no butt. Nope. Aww, I have a flat butt. <laughs> my son got my wife's butt, which is nice and juicy. But my butt is flat. My daughter's not happy. <laughs> right? Huh? Yeah. She's she's a strong girl. She's got strong legs. Yeah. Well, now she's a volleyball player. She switched to volleyball. Let me try. Yeah. Yeah. She's tall. She's very tall, but she's not as tall as some of the girls in her volleyball team. Oh, forget it. We need the vice grip. You don't want to go too tight, otherwise you'll crush the holes. Here, let me do it. You'll actually, you can actually crush the holes in there. Good thing I learned how to use a vice grip when I was a kid, huh? Wow, damn. That's impressive. And the vice grip has even crushed this tube. No. Fucking hell. Uh, let me see. You got it, you getting it or not? You getting any movement? Huh? Just don't take the tube out. Oh, we gotta start all over again. Shot? What do you think? Is it moving? It's moving, right? Yeah, I think I'm gonna All right. Here. Yeah. Well, thank God I have Luis, who's been pumping iron. Coming? Yeah. Dude. All right, this is a high five moment, okay? <laughs> Seriously, high five. Good job. So that's a high five moment, okay, in case you're wondering when we do get those. So what's happened is the, um, as we banged in the tube, the tubular retractor over the dilator, some, some soft tissue like a disc piece of the disc herniation gets, gets wedged in there between the two of them, just enough to do what's called a cold welding, where basically you weld one piece of metal to the other. And then Luis gets a workout. He gets to show off his bulging muscles. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. Save the day. So these are live stream surgeries, for those of you who don't know. These are not edited. If they were edited, we'd probably edit out a lot of the stuff. But they're live streams, and we want them to be live so the audience can ask questions and people can learn the truth about spine surgery because uh, everyone else hides the truth from you about spine surgery, but we don't. Hey, why is there no irrigation? We want everyone to see what really happens in the operating room. 
We're not ashamed of it. We're not afraid of it. We want everyone to see the ordeal, not because we're trying to get your sympathy, but because we want people to see the truth, just the truth in general. It's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to know the truth, <coughs> especially when it comes to health care. You know, there's so much junk out there, so much deception and lies and treachery, especially when it comes to back pain. You have all these people trying to sell you services or gizmos or gadgets that don't work, but <coughs> this stuff works. That, there's the source of the pain right there. And I just got to focus a little bit, the camera. Oh, man, it looks like the tube's being crushed, doesn't it? Ah, uh, it does, right? It looks oval shaped. So this is a big guy. His muscles are super strong and tight and he's clamping down on my tube. So hey, when you wake up, I'm gonna have a bill for you. <laughs> These are expensive tubes. It's like 1200 bucks each. Oh, no. oh yeah. <laughs> That's right, it's Louise's fault. All right, do we have good irrigation? <coughs> it looks okay. It looks okay. It just looks a little sluggish, but don't pop that bag whatever you do. Gosh. All righty. So a lot of people don't realize how expensive the equipment is to do these surgeries. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, Luis can straighten it out. I mean, round it out, right? He just ran the dilator through it. Standby. Yes, sir. What day is today? Tuesday? Tuesday. All right. So we've got, oh, you stubborn little guy. We have two on Thursday or three on Thursday? All right, cervical. We haven't done a cervical in a while. Yeah, so cervical Duke laser disc repair is really a great case. It's done with a incision that's four millimeters, folks. Half the length of this incision, half, because we use a skinnier tube, just a four millimeter tube. Oh my gosh, one levels. That's like heaven. Well, 5-1 lumbar could be difficult. Uh, oh, really? Right. I remember that. I can't remember who the anesthesiologist was. Rafferty? Rafferty, you ready for round two? All right. Second time's a charm. All right, folks, what is the black gap down there? That's the disc space. Where, and what is that pink thing? That's the bone of the vertebral body called the end plate. And there it is on the other side. So where is the disc? It's gone. He has no disc. It's literally bone on bone. But the, the reality is it's not the bone that's the source of his pain. It's this thing right up here that we're zapping away, called the annular tear. That little area in the back corner of the disc is where all the pain came from. And we're not leaving here until we get that thing fixed. Little bit of epidural bleeding, no big deal. But I apologize because you can't see very clearly, but I, c I can see well enough in my mind's eye. I know what needs to be done. I can visualize it in my head and I can see it in my mind. There's just not a lot that needs to be done at this level because there's not much disc left. So again, it's not the disc that's the problem, it's the annular tear. And the annular tear we're fixing right now as we speak, okay? Let's have a grabber. How you doing over there? Good, sir. 
Get into the fray. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Be a doer. Right, Flynn? Be a doer, not a watcher. That's what I tell my son. My son, Arius, who's probably going to watch these someday. He's always watching videos of things. I'm like, stop watching so much videos. Go out and do it. I'm just giving him a hard time. He does it. He actually, I should tell you, for those of you that like racing, I know there's a race fan or two out there. Arius uh, is in a stage now where he's transitioning from go-karts to cars. Pretty much have made the transition. And for the first time ever, he drove what's called an F3 car, United States F3. If you know what Formula One is, it's the top racing in the world. Best drivers, 20 of them. Below Formula One is Formula Two, and just below Formula Two is Formula Three. So he drove a US Formula Three car for the first time about two months ago in Buttonwill of California. He got basically one day, and it wasn't really good conditions. The track is very dirty with sand, so it's not very realistic. And he's done another two days in the car in Georgia, and then he came to Miami for his um, fourth day in the car, fourth day ever. And this is a car with uh, 300 horsepower, we're done. 300 horsepower, and there's the nerve right there to the left. That's gonna be the L3 nerve root. Um, let me get this area right here, Louise, just right here, laterally. Anyway, the F3 car is uh, 300 horsepower, very light, it's like uh, 1,600 pounds and it's a formula open wheel car. It's a very, very fast car. And he just um, literally broke the track record by one second in Miami over Linus Lindquist, who is like a superstar driver on his way to IndyCar. He's actually in Indy Lights right now. And Lindquist ran a 122.5. Arius ran a 121.5, a full second faster than Lindquist, which is remarkable. Um, nobody's ever driven the car that fast there. So he's going to be racing in Virginia at Virginia International Raceway this weekend. And from this weekend, he'll go to, uh, he's going to go to Italy to represent the United States and race in the Formula European Formula Regional European Championship. Yeah, exciting stuff. But he just doesn't have the experience that a lot of the other drivers do. And uh, he's coming in as what's called a wild card. So basically they've been driving this car, some of them for two years, some of them for three years. And he's just driven it three times and he's gonna go and try to, to do well. Uh, the other drivers start it at 16 and then go up to 20s, you know, 25, 26. And um, Arius is 16, so he's, you know, one of the youngest drivers there. Probably the youngest or second youngest, something like that. Um, but it's, it's junior drive, junior level formula driving. So it's his age group. Yeah, it's his age group. It's mostly 16 to 20 year olds. But um, we'll see, we'll see how he does. He's, he's doing well though. He did take the car off the track a few times. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank God. As a matter of fact, that's the thing about cars is you can't really see when they go off the track because the track is so big. It goes off into the, to the woods. You can't see. Thank God. You just see the cars not coming around when it's supposed to. And then you, you have that moment of, oh, shoot. And then you start to feel pain in your back pocket where your wallet sits. 
because you know there's going to be repairs that have to be done. <laughs> repairs are expensive. All right, let's see. Yep. But he's a good kid. Anytime he crashes the car, if he ever does, he says, I'm so, so sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to. I'm like, listen, don't worry about it. You know, as a race car driver, you can't be thinking about that. If, if all you're thinking about is not crashing, then you're not going to go fast. So it's like it's one of those things where you want to tell your kid to, you know, don't crash. <laughs> but at the same time, if you say that, just forget about racing because he's not going to be fast. So it's sort of a compromise. You know, I'm honestly thinking I'm in at 5-1 on the other side. I'm thinking we go in on the other side, get the dilator in there, and then try to get this thing in. That will open up the disk space. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah. So I'm going to switch sides. Now I'm going to come over there, switch sides. All right. All righty then. All righty. So um, because we're not all the way in the disc on the patient's left side at 5-1, but I am on the right side at 5-1. I'm thinking we'll do L5-S1 on the right side first. Okay, how's our, dial, how's our tubular retractor? Let me I just, it, huh? You switched it out? Let's see how bad it is. That one works fine. Is it going through or not? Stuck? It's stuck. He crushed it. I can't blame him. Oh, yeah, it's crushed. Holy mackerel. But you should be able to fix it. Yeah, but we do need to get a few more of these. I know they're expensive, but... Can I order 10? Yeah. Yeah, whatever you think we need. I just want to make sure we never run out. You know what I mean? I don't ever want to be in that situation. Well, in that case, I may just do... Um, L34 first, yeah, since I've already done it up here, you know, in case we're going to crush another tube. All right, let's get 3-4 done. Shot. Yeah, it looks like the guide wire, which is good. Shot. Uh, I really need to see a little more anterior, just a little bit, to make sure I can find the guide wire. Shot. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're going to do L34 on the right side first. We're leaving the L5S1 for last because I think that's going to be another one where it's going to be hard to get the tube in, and I don't want to break another tube. We only have so many, so once again, these little tubes are very expensive. It's just a simple piece of metal, but it literally costs $1,200 or $1,500 for that tube, so... The problem with supplies in medicine is very expensive. Um, any questions from our audience? Yes, we have a couple questions. Uh, oh, first, how come you didn't tell me? Well, was, you're a little busy. Oh, okay. So, uh, first question is: Can you fuse your sacroiliac? I'm so sorry, you can't hear your voice. Can, you, too can you hear me better now? Yeah, just raise your voice a little. Can you fuse a sacroiliac joint? Oh, so can you fuse a sacroiliac joint? The answer is yes. Yep. I haven't done a lot of sacroiliac joint fusions myself because I don't find it very necessary to do. Most of the time, the sacroiliac joint pain can be fixed with injections and, and the proper therapy, physiotherapy. Okay, so chiropractic and physical therapy are the best treatment for sacroiliac joint problems. Sean? Um, but I'll be honest with you, some patients have a hard time doing the therapy because it hurts so bad um, to do it. Shot. And the reason it hurts so bad, here, take this, to do it 
is the joint is just so inflamed at the beginning of the therapy. It's got inflammation. So any kind of manipulation of the joint is so painful. Shot. So the patients that have these sacroiliac joint problems, they actually um, go to therapy and they can't really do the therapy because it hurts so bad. You understand what I'm saying? So they, um, they, they don't let the doctor actually do what they need to do. They kind of, we call it guarding, they guard. They guard that joint. So when the doctor goes to do therapy on the joint and starts moving the joint and it hurts so bad because of the inflammation in that joint. So the patient actually doesn't get the movement of the joint, okay? You don't get the movement of the joint. If you can't move the joint, you can't break up the scar tissue in there. You can't do proper therapy. So you gotta do a shot first. You wanna do a sacroiliac joint injection. Shot. And by doing the injection, you reduce the amount of inflammation that's inside the joint. By reducing the inflammation, you get rid of the pain in the joint temporarily. So the way we treat sacroiliac joint disease is not fusions. We do injection combined with physiotherapy. Good. So that's the key. And, and nine out of 10 times, you can eliminate sacroiliac joint pain with just injections and therapy. Nine out of 10. So don't, don't, don't just go get a fusion of the SI joint. You, you probably don't need it. Unless you've done the shots three times, you've done the therapy program, and you've completed it, and you still have pain. In that case, I would do a sacroiliac joint rhizotomy, where you deaden the pain nerve to the joint. Okay? And that's done with a needle. It's very safe, very easy to do. Dr. Patel does that here. If you do the SI joint rhizotomy, and you still have pain, then you wanna consider a fusion after that. But it's rare that you need to do a fusion, rare. Now, of course, the companies that make the fusion stuff, they want you to have a fusion right away. They don't want you to wait. And there's a lot of greedy doctors because actually the money you get for a sacroiliac fusion is a lot of money, a lot, like $20,000. So there's a lot of people wanting to do those fusions that it's unnecessary. I'm just warning you. Unfortunately, there's a lot of motivation in medicine to do things because it pays well, okay? That doesn't mean you should do it. You wanna get things done for the right reason. Mm. And the right reason is for an SI joint fusion is because the, uh, take a look at this disc just for a second, okay? I know it's hard to see, but on the right side, that pinkish surface, that's the bone. That's the end plate of, of uh, L3. On the left side, there's another bone, and between them is the joint. This is what the SI joint, sacroiliac joint, looks like when it has inflammation in the joint. I need the pedal. Yeah, thank you. Just place it right here. So it's the inflammation in the joint that's causing all the pain. Well, you don't need to fuse the joint. Thank you, good job. You don't need to fuse the joint to uh, get rid of the pain. You can do an injection in the joint followed by therapy to break up all the scar tissue inside the joint. Now, is a disc and the SI joint the same? No, the disc is not a diarthrodial joint. The sacroiliac joint is a diarthrodial joint. It's got an articular surface with car uh, cartilage on it, whereas the disc does not and it has a synovial capsule around the joint, synovial fluid, and it has different kind of innervation and structure than, say, a disc. The disc cannot be fixed with therapy, and the annular tear cannot be fixed with therapy, but a sacroiliac joint usually can. You just have to be able to get in and do the therapy, and that's impossible to do when it hurts so bad. So that's why you gotta get the shot first, okay? The shot's not gonna fix the problem, but it's gonna make it so you can get the problem fixed with therapy. I don't know if that makes sense to people, but stand by. That's what needs to be done. And if that fails and the rhizotomy fails, then yeah, by all means, go ahead and get a fusion done. 
it's probably the best treatment at that point. But you need to fail the shots and therapy and fail the rhizotomy first. Now, what else could be done for the SI joint? There's another thing that can be done. You've all been hearing about it. PRP, stem cells. For sure, if it was me, I would, I would do PRP and stem cells first because I know it works. We do it here at Duke Spine and it actually takes the pain away. But we save that as a last resort. Yeah, no, I was just looking. We're good. So I would say the order of treatment is shot with steroid medicine combined with therapy first, followed by, um, and you can do up to three shots, <coughs> followed by uh, rhizotomy, followed by PRP stem cells, and then followed by fusion. So we actually had a sacroiliac joint fusion course that was taught here at Duke Spine. Two of them, huh? And you loved it. But yeah, we, we do them, but we don't need to do them. The, the reality is, yeah, the reality is, is that it's unnecessary most of the time. Yeah, we can do it. We just don't have patients who need it. By the time we do the injections and the therapy, like 90% of the patients don't come back because they're happy, their pain's gone. Um, and then sometimes Patel does PRP stem cells and if the steroid injection therapy program didn't work, then the stem cells and does work. Um, but we rarely ever need to do fusion. I, I haven't had to do a single one in years. have another question oh yeah sure sure yes uh, patient on YouTube is getting three vertebrae in their cervical spine fused uh -huh. can this procedure work for him yes this procedure should be what you're doing not the fusion 100% if you have cervical disc herniations in your neck and you're having an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion you don't want that why don't you run the video that shows a comparison of the Duke laser disc repair versus an ACDF. Can you cue that up and run it? Yeah, it's running right now. Nice job, Diego. Dude, you're, you're kicking butt, I love it. This MRI represents a typical case with L45 and L5S1 symptomatic discs. A symptomatic disc causing neck or back pain can include bulging discs, herniated discs, ruptured discs, degenerative discs, protruding discs, spinal stenosis, radiculopathy, and sciatica. This patient can choose traditional fusion surgery or the Duke laser disc repair to help alleviate the pain caused by and within the symptomatic discs. Here, two patients with comparable disc injuries are treated. On the left, the highly invasive spinal fusion and on the right, the least invasive Duke laser disc repair. The spinal fusion requires a very large incision, usually leaving a large scar. The Duke laser disc repair requires only a very small incision, usually less than a half an inch long. In this small opening, a cylindrical rod called a dilator is inserted to gently spread the muscle to create a small passage and guide through which the surgery is performed endoscopically. The incision for the fusion continues, including penetrating the skin, fat tissue, and multiple layers of muscle through to the bone. With the Duke laser disc repair, a mallet is used to advance the tip of the dilator into the symptomatic disc. A tube, called the tubular retractor, slides over the dilator and is carefully positioned into the disc, again using the mallet. The rest of the entire Duke laser disc repair surgery will occur inside this narrow tube. To access the spine, the spinal fusion requires the muscle to be separated from the vertebrae. This very invasive action causes trauma and permanent damage to the muscles. 
whereas in the endoscopic Duke laser disc repair, the muscle is not damaged. The endoscope camera is inserted into the tubular retractor to allow the surgeon to guide the laser inside each symptomatic disc. To accommodate the fusion hardware, a large bone grabber is used to perform a laminectomy by removing bone from the spine. The fiber optic laser used in the Duke laser disc repair is manipulated with great accuracy to remove only painful inflammatory tissue from the disc. In this highly magnified view, the laser is used to precisely remove damaged disc material that is causing the pain. The laser is debreeding, or essentially vaporizing, damaged tissue in the disc's outer layer, or annulus, specifically at the annular tear, the source of the rupture or herniation and pain. After the fusion patient's damaged discs are removed, a metal or plastic cage housing bone grafting material is inserted in place of the removed discs. Once the laser has removed the painful part of the annular tear, the endoscope and tubular retractor are removed, leaving less than one half inch incision in the skin, which is closed with a single stitch, strips, and a band-aid. Total time for the Duke laser disc repair surgery, approximately one hour. The fusion, however, is still underway. Holes in the spine must be tapped in preparation for the large pedicle screws that anchor the fusion hardware. The Duke laser disc repair patient is in recovery usually 45 to 60 minutes before release to go home. The fusion screws are inserted into the bone, as shown in the x-ray. After all screws are in place, rods are used to connect the screws together to prevent movement of the secured vertebrae. Cross links are added to bridge the rods together for additional stability. Fusion hardware, by design, is to fuse joints that normally move, preventing natural movement in the damaged portion of the spine. Whereas with the Duke laser disc repair, there is no loss of movement. Normal movement and flexibility of the disc and joints is preserved. The Duke laser disc repair patient is soon back home, enjoying life, with a very fast recovery, allowing normal activities without pain. Meanwhile, bone graft material is placed throughout the fusion surgery site. These morselized pieces of bone will eventually grow together to help promote the fusion process. Prior to closing the wound, a temporary drain is installed to allow excess fluid to drain. Average surgery time of a traditional two-level fusion is two and a half hours, with an additional three to four hours in the recovery room. As we've seen, in comparison, a spinal fusion requires a much larger incision and results in a significant amount of scar tissue. The Duke laser disc repair's half-inch incision leaves no scar tissue around the spine or nerves. A large amount of bone is removed with a spinal fusion. With the Duke laser disc repair, no bone is removed. Each disc is accessed through a natural opening in the spine. The entire disc is completely removed. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our little video showing you the difference between the Duke laser disc repair and cervical fusions called ACDF. And what do you think about it? Do you want a fusion? No, of course not. There's no need to do fusion anymore. Back in the days when there was no Duke laser disc repair, yes, you needed fusion, but now with endoscopic spine surgery, you don't need cervical fusions. You need the Duke laser disc repair. It works better than a fusion. It gets rid of more pain than a fusion. There's no big incision. There's no painkillers afterwards. You take Tylenol for the pain. And the recovery is literally an hour and you're done. All right, standby laser. And it lasts longer and it's better than fusion. You don't lose any movement, right? With fusion, you're losing movement. I'm just looking at what we got here. So there's a little bit of oozing of blood. There's the epidural space. The oozing is coming from, let me have a laser. The oozing is coming from the end plates, right? Because the end plates are still in, a bit inflamed. A little bit of fat right there, epidural fat. It's just getting in the way. We're just about done with this disc. Repairing it. Again, this patient would have had a fusion otherwise. He didn't want fusion. He's a big guy. Didn't want screws and rods up and down his spine. All right. Scope off. So we're going to do a little antiseptic down the tube. 
Thank you, Luis. And we're going to clear out the antiseptic. And then we're going to clear out some more. And we're pretty much done. And that was L34. So we're taking this tube out and thank God we didn't bend it. And then we're going to go to number four or five. Let's have the guide wire come on in. We're saving L5S1 for last because it's going to be the most difficult. I normally don't do it last, but I'm worried it's going to bend the, uh, the tube. And if it does, then so be it. It's time to get new tubes anyway, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There is no time to get new tubes, but I don't want my patient feeling bad about it. So <laughs> we like buying tubes. <laughs> Why they have new purple and green tubes and can add to our collection. Blue ones. My Duke's fine blue. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you don't want to be that guy, right? Shot. All right, so I'm getting around the facet joint, shot. Okay. You hold pressure, I'll do this. So we finished L34, we're moving on to L45. Did I answer your question there? Diego? Uh, yes, you did. Did I do a good job? As you always do. All right, good. I don't know if I completely answered it, but relax. Shot. All righty then. On to the next shot. Getting close. Let's see if I can get this guide wire out right up against the, the tear. The annular tear shot. I actually could feel the herniation getting pushed back in the disc. That time, again, we'll use our little straw, our little metal straw. It is slightly, is it slightly bent? I think we're okay. All right making good progress. Our patient is sleeping comfortable, yes? And just getting some great sleep. Oh, by the way, the last patient, our 86-year-old patient was doing absolutely fantastic, was so happy. Let's take it out. And he's gone. <clears throat> so our first two surgeries of the day are gone. And he, he was doing really well. He had very little pain. He had some incisional pain only where I cut him and put the tube in. And he'll be back tomorrow. But he was very, very happy with the surgery. Remember, we did three levels on him. All right. So now we're going to do the four five on the right. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, that's the writing. Pretty sure it's here. Yeah, it's right there. It's kind of hard to see, huh? All right. We're getting there. I had some really good questions and audience participation you know I normally don't do five disc levels in a patient but this patient I made an exception for because he's coming from out of, out of the country and I just know how difficult it is to get back 
for his second, you know, if he had to have a second surgery done, which normally that's what we would do. We would do maybe three levels in the first one and then two levels in the second surgery. But I decided, you know, to do five because he's healthy and he really wanted all five done. And I didn't have a good reason not to. And he's traveled pretty far. Huh? Yeah, he's traveled from uh, Vancouver Island. So he's come a long way, really across the United States from the Northwest to the Southeast. And I felt badly trying to make him have to come back for a second surgery. So we decided just to get it done in one shot. Wipe, just get a thing and wipe. Don't, don't, don't lose that, whatever you do. Ah, let's see what we got here. All right, here's our tear. So this, this message is for his family. When he gets home, do not let him get back to activities too soon. So he's allowed to walk and be normal, but he is not allowed to carry anything over 25 pounds for six weeks. 25 pounds for six weeks. After six weeks, he's able to carry up to 40 pounds. Okay, 40 pounds for the next, for up to one year. One year from the date of his surgery. One year from today. Okay, why? Because we want to make sure the discs get to heal. And if the discs don't heal by the time he starts lifting heavy things, he could re-rupture the disc. About 1% of our patients re-rupture their disc. And they have to have treatment again. A second surgery. That's one in a hundred. So I tell everybody avoid heavy lifting for a while and don't bend over at the waist to pick anything up from the ground. Now he's gonna have a back brace to wear when he's out of bed. You don't wear that in bed, obviously. We don't want him wearing it in bed. We just want him wearing it out of bed. Luis, what am I seeing here? Is this just, why is it foggy? This is four or five, but I don't think it's the disc. I think it's the scope. We may need to wipe the scope down. Yeah, could be a little milky. Should be in. Let's see, put, put the white thing there. Looks pretty good. I think it's better for sure. Must have been some, some stuff on the end there. Will you check the scope after? Yeah, I know. Just make sure you check it. Sometimes the lenses inside the scope will shift in, in their position and it'll affect the quality of the image. Well, any other questions? Uh, no, not yet, but someone is saying congratulations to Arias. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a little too early to say, but you know, if things work out for him, and uh, he does a good job and God willing, then maybe he'll, he'll actually be able to watch him drive on television. We'll see. Like I said earlier though, I'd be perfectly happy if he became a neurosurgeon, not be a driver, but he loves racing. It's in his blood. Huh? That's what he wants. He wants to be a Formula One driver, not a pro racer. He will, no, but there's a difference. You got to understand. He, he, he doesn't want to drive for NASCAR. Even though they make a lot of money, he doesn't care. 
No, NASCAR is not Formula One. No, it's all right. NASCAR goes around in circles. And I mean, they're starting to change that up a little more now. Like Formula One is like, I mean, what really separates racers is they're braking and they're turning. Braking and turning. And if there's no bra if there's no braking and no turning, then you know, there's not, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of skill. You just got to keep your tires on the track, you know, and keep from sliding off. But don't ever tell a NASCAR driver I said that because they're going to get upset or a NASCAR fan. The reality is, though, it's the skill level of a NASCAR driver is very low compared to a real, what's called um, um, a road course driver. So Arias has really no interest in NASCAR or IndyCar. He just wants to race Formula One. It sounds a bit snobbish, but that's where he that's what he wants to drive. You know? And honestly, I think he has the uh, the skill to do it. It's just whether or not the opportunity will come. There's a, there are actually a lot of unskilled drivers in Formula One. Like I show, I'm not going to mention any names. I don't want to get in trouble, but there's at least three or four of them right now <laughs> that are racing because their dads are billionaires and they've got literally billions of dollars and they just pay for the, their sons to drive. All right. And the skill level is not that high, but they got money. I don't have billions of dollars. I'll never be able to do what they can do. So Arias has to make it based on his skill. All right, just about done with this one. Um, everything's going really well for the patient. We're done with the bilateral L3-4 and the right L4-5. What's next is uh, L5-S1. You can see the epidural fat at 12 o'clock. The uh, traversing route will go across there. We don't want to mess with it at all because there's a nerve root there. Scope off. All right, again, we'll use a little antiseptic. If you haven't downloaded the Duke Spine Institute app, I would encourage you to do so because the app has a lot of useful information in it and it's free. Um, yeah, we're good. All right, let's get down to L5S1. I got it. Taking the tube out. Got one more disc to do. You got to grab it and pull. All right, come on in with that fluoro. Now, as I said earlier, I place the spinal needle on the right side, this side that I'm working on, into the L5S1, and it went in really nicely. So I feel really good about its position. So, what I'm going to do is a little trick. I'm going to get my dilator in on the right side and then I'm going to try to get the needle further in on the left side and see what happens. All right, so, hey, Luis, help me out. We got wires here in the way. So here we go. Take that. Guide wire. Okay, now remember, this patient has, you need it, you can't get so much hip. If you get too much hip, you're going to have a hard time seeing. He's a really thick guy. All right, that's probably as good as we're going to get it, to be quite honest with you. Shot. All right, if you can clean it up at all, that would be very helpful. So, guide wires in the L5S1 disc, removing this needle. I'm going to run the dilator down over the guide wire. Hmm. 
me have a 11 blade. Hold this here. Just hold it. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Just caught on the skin. All right, Sean. Hey, it's terrible. Got to do better than that. Once again, the only reason I can do this is because we started out at the beginning of the surgery and I know for a fact that the needle went into the disc space the right way, through the right path. So I, I know that bringing this dilator down is going to be just fine because I've got a good pathway, a good highway. Sean, the highway is the key. Shot. It's just, you got to find s some improvement in that for me. Shot. All right, starting to go. You can see it. And I just need enough to be able to see where I'm progressing to with that dilator, you know? Shot. And he's comfortable? Yes. Uh, good. That's fine. I, I want him safe, but I also want him as deep as you feel comfortable making him right now. Because this is going to be the hardest part of the surgery. I need to see a little more than that. You're going full full bore, full power, right? Jesus. No, no. Just just get it where you can. Do you want to get Monica in here? It seems like it's advancing. Take that. Take that. Shot. Now, yeah, once again. Okay. Yeah, if she can come, that'd be great. If she's not too busy, I'd love to have her here trying to help us. Well, we're definitely in the disc space. And, uh, uh, I feel good about it. You saw I had to whack the heck out of it because those bones are so collapsed in there. And his, his uh, you know, the muscles are in his back are tightening up. And, and it's not that he's awake he's tightening up. He's actually asleep tightening up. You know, when you're sleeping and something pinches your foot or something at night while you're sleeping, you're going to pull your leg away because you feel that pinch. You know what I mean? And that's just a reflex shot. And people do things reflexively. All right, Luis, this is all you, my man.
They're coming. Shot. Nice. Good. We're in like Flynn. I don't take the tube out. Shot. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Can you tell? Hey, we're just having a hard time seeing with the fluoro. Shot. He's a thick guy. there look at that look at that disk space open that's amazing he's comfy <sighs> Vancouver Island you know anything about it I think it's quite a nice place, actually. A lot of forest and just beautiful out there, right off the coast. Just north of Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we got in. We got lucky. So far, things are going his way, and that's always a good thing, always a good thing. So let's head down, and we're just about done with this surgery. It's been a long one, I know. All right, so we got a lot of blue going on. That's just the, the dye we put in there a while. this disease and a lot of people think oh there's no fix but there is when you've got degenerative disc disease and you got pain you can get it fixed Diego we have any questions from our audience sorry I'm just trying to adjust this adapter here oh uh, no 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 questions Hold on. Laser. So, Luis, um, the scope is, I mean, the tube is just not wanting to move. But, you know what I mean? We're kind of like just wedged in here really bad. He's deep, right? Rafferty? Yeah, so his muscles are just cramping crumping down on this tube and like making it so hard to maneuver it impossible actually so I'm gonna have to come up with a solution here why is the irrigation so sluggish I just honestly yeah here's another tube that's just crushed see it yeah. 
No, it's all right. Let me just, yeah, you can turn the scope off. I've got to move this tube. Let me have the uh, dilator. That's not the fluid adapter, it's the problem. It's actually the, uh, the tube, these little flanges. Let me have, um, I need the vice grip. Yes. No, vice grip. Incredible. Hmm. His his uh, spine is just cramping down on the metal so bad that it's literally not releasing the tube. Huh? No, no, I need to watch it come back a little bit. Um, should have another vice grip, right? I don't know if that's going to do it, man. We need another vice grip, I think. I don't think the blue towel is going to do it. That's how incredible, huh? It's just wedged in there. So you get to see problem solving, troubleshooting that we have to do. Someone wants to know what's the weight of the patient. What's the what? Weight. I don't know the weight. 310? Well, I guess 310. Let me have the fluid adapter, the other fluid adapter. You know, it's not the weight that's the problem. It's not his weight that I'm having trouble with. It's his the collapsing of the vertebrae, but more importantly, it's his muscles. He is so muscular that those muscles are clamping down. And they're uh, not letting us move. No, no, I've got it with the, I can get it with this. I mean, the tube is destroyed. We have another destroyed tube, but. 
but um, it's fine. Keep the other one available in case I need it, Louise. Coker? No, the Coker won't do anything. The flat one? Yeah, we may need it. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work, but... Get yeah. another vice grip. So I moved it back a little bit. I'm gonna release these and take a look. Hopefully we've made a little progress. I need to get this out. Let me have the other thing. <laughs> we've never had to do it this bad, by the way, folks. Honestly, I've had to use the vice grips before. I mean, like once every five years or six years, but not two vice grips and not this bad. Let me see what we got here. Yep, let me have the laser. So I basically just had to move the two back a little bit so I can do a little lasering. And you've got them as sleepy as you can, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't need you to go any deeper. Mm. Huh? No, 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 no. Keep them safe. That's the most important thing. He's going to get great relief, but we're we're out. A few pieces of instrumentation and tools. Let me have the grabber. You can see how the tube is crushed. Do you all see that? It looks like a, like an egg shape rather than an oval. I mean, just totally. All right, I'm going to try to bring it back a little more. Hey, yeah, there we go. Laser, now. So we might, we're just going to, probably, Luis, good luck with fixing these, but I don't think they're fixable. And I think the, the end pieces where the adapter attaches are compromised. So we may just have to throw them away. Maybe give one to the patient as a souvenir. Anybody know who Andre the Giant is? Of course. Huh? The, yeah. From the movie The Princess Bride. Great movie. Yeah, but he's better looking than Andre the Giant. But just he's a, he's a big man. And it's not his size that's the issue. It's 
it's the collapse of the disc, but just squeezing on the tube. Got to be ready with that. Take it, laser. Feel bad is disc is so collapsed. The good news is even though it's collapsed, it can still become pain free. And that's what we're shooting for here. Good. Just about done here, doctor. We're just about done. Five minutes maximum. Okay. No, we had to. We have to abort the right. Huh? I can't hear you. Oh no, we don't need depot. You can just pull it. Go ahead, Luis. Pull it. Just yeah. There's no. There's. You don't need that. I would put a stitch if you want. Grabber, laser standby. Just minutes from being finished here. Take. Just want to make sure we get all of that tear that needs to be gotten. Let me have that. And again, just as I suspected at 5-1, we would have a problem with the tube being crushed, and, and it was again. So just like at 3-4, those two discs, the three, four, and five, one are so collapsed and so big, so powerful of a man, you know, all that muscle that uh, I guess our tubes just didn't stand a chance. That's fine because we still got done what we needed to. I feel really good about it. Yeah, that looks good right there. I think that's the end. That's Victor. Thanks. The yellow thing, by the way, in case you're wondering, is just fat. All right, we're done. Whew. That was a battle. Huh? I don't think I can even get this all the way down. I'm going to need more irrigation.
More irrigation. That should be one more. Beautiful. did it and Louise this is the one that's ruined uh, another one that's ruined so just be careful with that I think the problem is going to be right there see how those are bent I don't know that the fluid adapter yeah see what you can do but I don't know that you can salvage that all right go ahead and hold some pressure you want to put about this much pressure on it. Perfect. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If you have questions, type them up. Um, tough case because the discs are so collapsed and our patient is so massively strong with big muscles com completely crushing down uh, on, the, on the tube, you could see it. it. We ruined two of our tubes. You could see how it just squashed them. Those are steel, steel tubes. Uh, if you tried to crush them with your hands, you wouldn't be able to. It takes massive amounts of force to crush down on those tubes. So that gives you an idea how strong the muscles are in the back. I'm gonna call the EBL two mil so DLDR, uh, bilateral L34, uh, right L45, right L5S1. So this is an outpatient surgery. Our patient will be discharged in about an hour um, to go back to his hotel. And then I'll check on him tomorrow and see how he's doing. Uh, type your questions up. I'll be happy to come answer them for you in the ne about next three minutes. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A Band-Aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. 
Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. You are live. Okay, hi, Dr. Dugmajian here, and we are wrapping up our Duke laser disc repair. And uh, if you watched along, you saw that we did have some issues with the surgery in terms of um, the, uh, the tube that we put in to do the surgery, the endoscopic tube was in between these bones, but the bones were very collapsed. Usually it's not a problem to get in. We can get in with the dilator, spread things apart, but he's such a big guy and so massive that, you know, he got a hold of the tube pretty good with his, with his vertebrae and just clamped down on it. Yeah, come in. Coffee. Thanks. And so the vertebrae are just crushing down on the tube and basically they, they squashed the tube. <laughs> and uh, we took a round tube and made it into a, a almost a pancake. <laughs> and so uh, not common, you know, we don't, we don't see that very often, but that's fine. We were able to get done the surgery on the, the only level I couldn't do is the right side at L5S1. There's a big bone spur there. And basically, there's not even a herniated disc. So I still feel really good about it. Uh, I think he's going to be very happy with his results. At the beginning of the surgery, um, we tested those three discs. And they were painful for him. So they were definitely the cause of his back pain. And they were causing his typical back pain that he gets all the time. So we don't just ask patients if it causes pain. We ask them if it causes their typical pain. But I've never seen a discogram cause disc pain that wasn't the patient's typical pain. Maybe once in a blue moon, you'll see somebody who will get pain and you say, is that your typical pain? No, no, I don't normally get that pain. Okay, well then that's called discordant pain or atypical pain. But 99% of the time, when you elicit pain in a disc during a discogram, the pain the patient has is gonna be their typical pain. And that's what we saw today, his typical pain in his back at L3-4, L4-5, and L5-S1. So overall, I was very happy. The surgery went well, we got it all done. He's a big guy. He wanted us to do all five levels in one surgery. Normally we don't, but we did that for him. We made a concession to do it because he's traveling from so far. We do get a lot of people from out of the country. Uh, as I said earlier, we have some British patients that wanna come here, but they're unable to do so because of the travel restrictions currently. But I think those travel restrictions will change soon in time. Anyway, that said, um, do we have any questions? No questions? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the Duke Laser, Duke Laser Disc Repair. This is the most state-of-the-art spine surgery available in the world to treat herniated discs, bulging discs, degenerated discs, spinal stenosis, pinched nerves, radiculopathy, myelopathy, pretty much anything degenerative, which are the most common problems with the spine anyway. Um, and we have great results and it's all done minimally invasive. So this patient had basically all three discs fixed on both sides with two seven millimeter incisions, just that big. So it's basically band-aid incisions. He'll be able to fly back to Canada tomorrow night if he wants to go tomorrow night, or he can stick around and hang, with, hang out with Mickey Mouse and uh, visit Disney World. All right, Perfect. again, I hope you enjoyed the surgery, uh, we did. And I'm looking forward to seeing my three patients tomorrow in clinic. And we'll do some testimonials and get those out hopefully soon. All right. Have a good night.